welcome to chapter two. This chapter is going to concentrate on getting us started with Spring MVC. And we're going to start by configuring our development environment and the web server that we'll be using for this course, Apache Tomcat. Now you can use any development environment or web server that you're comfortable with, but I'm going to use Eclipse for this course. We're going to follow a few basic steps to get the environment configured, but you don't have to use exactly the same setup as me. If you've done some web development in Java before, then feel free to use your own setup. And similarly, although I'm assuming you have some previous knowledge of Java web development before, you might need a recap of the concepts of MVC. If so, then in the second half of this chapter, I'll be spending about 10 minutes having a look at what MVC means. Now, if you've been on a virtual pair programmers course before, you'll know the routine for the practical work by now. But if not, you can use any development environment you like. That can be Eclipse, NetBeans, IntelliJ, or even a basic text editor. As Eclipse is probably still the leading IDE, I'll be using that one for the recordings. Feel free to substitute your own. Now, I'm assuming a previous knowledge of Java web development and Spring, so I'm working on the assumption that you already have an IDE configured and working and that you're comfortable with it. Now, I will need to show you the code we're going to be using through these videos. On the previous Spring Framework course, I worked through a very simple bookstore as an example, and I'll be continuing working with that code. Let's have a quick run down the code that I'll be using. Have a look in the SRC folder, just make that a little wider, and there are four packages in there. There is a client package, and inside there we have a very simple main method just to use as an informal test. In there, we're opening the application context and we're doing various operations with our services. The data package is pretty much empty. And that's because on this course, to keep things focused on the web tier, I'm only going to be using mock implementations. In other words, all the data I'm using will be in memory. This is so that our code runs fast and so that we're not going to run into any problems with databases and hibernate and so on. Now, of course, with your Spring knowledge, you can edit the XML application context to switch in a production database if you prefer. The domain tier is similarly simple. There's just a single class in there called book, and that naturally represents a book that you could buy from an online bookstore. There is a test class in there, but that's not really very interesting for this course. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, here's the services package. And we do have two services defined in here, but really for this course, I'm only going to be interested in the book service. So here's its interface and very simple and basic. We're able to get all the books by a particular author, get all the recommended books for a particular user, and find various books and add books and so on. Of course, in a real application, this interface would be far richer. As I mentioned, we're only using mocks for this course, so have a look inside the book service mock implementation, and there are a series of, I'll just go to the bottom of here, there's a series of full implementations of those methods. We're going to want some fairly rich web pages later on in the course, so to keep things interesting, I've added something like a thousand books inside this mock implementation. Before we build any web pages, we can go into our Spring client and run as Java application and the red text is just the spring logging, but the rest of it you can see from the top. Here's our entire catalogue, and there's a full list of all of the books in our catalogue, which looks quite good. And then going down to the bottom, I think in the client application, I just add a couple of my own books, 
And there we are. We've added Spring in Action by Craig Walls, Expert One-on-One -on -one J2EE Design and Development by Rod Johnson, and then we do a couple of searches by ISBN. Okay, so that's it for the Java. I'm also assuming you have a good working knowledge of Java web development. If not, do consider picking up our course, Java Web Development. As mentioned in the introduction chapter, I'll be assuming that you do know about JSP, JSTL, and servlets. You don't need to be an expert in these concepts, but you at least need to recognize them. Okay, well, for this course, I'm going to be deploying to Apache Tomcat. Also, I'm going to use a very simple process for deploying to Tomcat. Now, I can probably use an IDE to automate many of the Tomcat operations for me. As I've said, though, I don't know exactly which IDE you're using. So for the videos, I'll be keeping things as simple and basic as possible. You can follow my approach if you're following along at home, or if you'd rather use an Eclipse plugin, feel free to do so. I just can't support you in that. To start, we're going to need to get Tomcat up and running. Now, as I mentioned, I'll be doing this outside of the IDE. Inside the workspace that you've downloaded as part of this course, you'll notice that I've supplied a Tomcat folder. This is a full distribution of Apache Tomcat 6. For simplicity, I've also supplied a bat file called starttomcat.bat. And all you need to do is double click to run it. Now, by the way, if you're running on Unix, Linux, or Macintosh, you will need to look inside the Tomcat bin directory, and you'll find a startup shell script, startup.sh, and you can run that through your terminal. Now, what you're looking for when you've started up Tomcat is what I call a clean console. It's quite hard to explain, really, because as you can see here, there's an awful lot of rubbish spat out by Tomcat that I'm really not interested in. It's largely info logging. We're really just looking for anything like Java stack traces. Any exceptions thrown means that something's badly wrong. We're looking for the line server startup, and that should mean all is well. Now, to check that's working, you'll need to go to a browser, and any decent browser will do. You can also use uh, Internet Explorer, if you like, on this course. And what you're going to do is navigate to the address 127.0.0.1, colon, 80, 80. And then hitting return, you should see the Apache Tomcat congratulations page. OK, so back into Eclipse, we're going to deploy our code on this course using ANT. Now, the ANT script you'll find in the root of your project. It's the file called build.xml. I don't know if you've used ANT in the past, and that's certainly not a prerequisite of this course. You won't need to do much with ANT. This script I've provided here is responsible for gathering together your project and to build a WAR file in the correct format. For example, all of the XML files, such as our application.xml, will end up under the webinf directory to ensure that users can't browse to them. Again, if you're in any doubt about WAR files, do check our standard Java web development course. Now, to run the ANT script, you need to right-click on it, select Run As, and ANT Build. Now, there is a problem with ANT if you're running in Eclipse and you haven't run ANT before. You might see this error here, Build Failed. And if it's saying that Java Home does not point to the JDK, then this is because...